Good weekend, all. I Rapstein with your Metal Market Wrap Up, and this is your weekend edition for Friday the 23rd of September 2022. What a week, my gosh. Gold down $25 today. That's a bounce. It was down $35. Silver market down 70 cents. It was down 85 cents. Copper down 13 cents. That's a big bounce. It was down 11 cents more, almost 23 cents or so. So I can go on and on. What happened? It's so simple. The dollar took off and everything around it cratered. It came about in large part today because of the British pound break. The pound broke 400 points, took it back to lows not seen, in, what, 37 years, something like that, they're saying. Um, tremendous break in it. And that's because that, um, as you know, they had the PM election and Ms. Truss had a policy. She enacted it. She followed just what she ran on, and she has cut taxes left and right. She's putting windfall taxes on domestic energy producers. Uh, the bank yesterday of England had to raise interest rates, and now there's an immediate call that it should either possibly even have an emergency meeting to go another 50 or 100 basis points right away because of what's going on in the pound. There's an emergency going on there. Um, as for our markets, you know, you take up the dollar like this, anything priced in dollars suddenly gets a lot more expensive. That's bearish. Look at energies. The combination of central bank after central bank after central bank raising rates is meant to slow demand down. To a degree, there's flexibility in the demand for energy, to, the, to a degree. Very shortly, I'm gonna remind you over and over, the alliance between the United States and other countries leaving uh, out of their strategic reserves oil is gonna end. They gotta start replacing it. This break in the energies is going to be short lived. How deep it goes, I don't know. I'm not interested in knowing. I'm interested in when it turns and then I wanna get involved. I was fascinated today that the bond market closed higher in all this. Bonds are screaming at you that yes, the yields in them can still climb a bit. Keyword, a bit. It's the two year, the 30 day, it's the one year, it's the three year that are the markets that are going to be most impacted. I watch traders today get their heads handed to them in the 10 because that's sort of right on the cusp of where everything moves, but even it didn't add big to the yield. Were you down hard in cocoa? Yeah, cotton was limit down today. Grain markets beat up. You, you take the dollar up this much, what do you think happened in grains? You're not competitive. You're making foreign grain cheaper for the big importer, China and other countries that need it. And you suddenly go, hold on, uh, via the dollar conversion, that's a bit too expensive. And especially for the yuan, which is collapsing in value overseas at the, outside their band limit. So there's real problems going on. You keep your eye what's going on in China. I, I read an article today that they're getting the equivalent of $500 billion ready to do something for the property people. October 16th is the party Congress. They've got to do something before that party Congress. So be aware of that. When you look at gold, just look at a dollar chart and lay it over it and boom. This is a monthly chart. Come on, you've just collapsed this market $300 an ounce since the Ukraine invasion. That's basically what it is. When you look at the chart here, you can see how it gets beaten up as this occurred. Now, would I want to be short on the first challenge to the and under the 200 day average in the lower band when you're not embedded? No, I'll let you own the short. I'd rather pull away, wait for the rallies and hit the market again. Until the dollar shows a sign of peaking out, this is bearish. When the dollar shows a sign that it's peaking out, could be a long-term peak, ah, then I probably want to own gold again, not until that point in time. On the weekly chart, as you look at the swing line, still pointing down, you can see where you're at in the moving averages. You're underneath the uh, 200 week, you're under the Bollinger Band. I'm showing this again so you can see it, and I'll wrap it up with the slow stochastic. Okay. Now the gold-silver ratio, you're underneath the 18-week average. So your bias is where? 
that silver overall is stronger than gold. Doesn't have to be it every week, but that's your bias until it changes. But silver's in a downtrend. Interesting one, though. Should this market be able to get back and close over 1987, it would and ideally take out 1989, two weeks ago high, that could be the bull move. That could be the start of something. It hasn't happened. The bears are still in control. Momentum had gotten itself down. It's come up enough now where I'm still not nuts about going short in markets that have readings under a 30. Doesn't mean I look at overbought, oversold on a weekly chart. I do on the daily, but I still have that rule of thumb. I go, I don't like that. It either embeds or it doesn't. And 27, now you can turn back up from there. If you turn up, price will go up. In the copper market, this is a big time area for copper. They call it Dr. Copper. Copper represents world industrial production. It doesn't have to be the US or just China, it's everywhere. And this market keeps looking at it. Now, if you go on to your Bloomberg, uh, terminal, or if you take a look, if you don't have one of those, and most people don't, you go on to their website, you'll see articles on copper. And they keep writing about the shortage that is coming. And I get it. And with interest rates this high and currency moves the way they are, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get what they're writing about. But it's the timing that you have to watch. Timing is everything in futures. And this is not the time to be picking a bottom in copper. It's nice to talk it, but this is not it. The chart is bearish. If it gets through this level here and can't hold it, I predict you'll go to 302. This is the crucial time. The pros will sell the bounces unless you clear right here, 369.75, and then they'll back away. That's 32 cents higher, roughly. I think they're still in the bear camp. The platinum today went into a state of collapse. Outside week down, notice the number zone that held it. You got to 943.50 as a high this week. 945.30 is the 200 day average right up there. Always look at where a major moving average is. When a market is under it and you come back to it, that average should, doesn't always do it, but should act as a resistance point. And it, I've yet to see where it's not one of the two, the 100 or 200. If they're close together, it's real important. So between that, the 18 week and the 200 week, as the market was coming up, and you can see what, what I'll do it right here. First resistance, the pattern had been lower highs, lower lows. I think you'd agree it's already bearish. So the well-heeled traders might be selling short at 905 with stops over that high, 74 cents. It's way too rich for a guy like me. That's a lot of money to risk on a trade. Market went up, failed against that zone, and this is where you're at right now. So until you take that out, you still have the chance here of making a run at the 804 level. The dollar, kingpin, but would I ever tell you to buy long over, ever, over a Bollinger Band? I won't. I know it can do one of these runs at any time. That is a very big difference between me telling you to buy there and go short. I won't do that. Would I do it in here when you're embedded? Absolutely. So if you learn how to work with what we call momentum locking in and embedding with the Bollinger Band, you get a game plan. You play the game plan. Nothing works all the time, but if you watch this, you're going to go, darn it. I like what this does. I like the risk reward that it offers. It puts me on the right side of momentum and price more times than not by a lot. So take a look at it. You might want to take a look at that enhanced Bollinger Band course. And at the very least, this could be the spot where for a lot of you, you come in and you look at some of the other things that we do. And by those, I mean that you might want to look at what I call my morning subscriber videos. You hear me talk about them all the time. The subscription's nice. It's inexpensive, very. You're spending more on your Starbucks coffees. I always say that than my subscriptions are running. You buy a lot. Okay, if you get a coffee a day, it's a joke. I mean, five bucks a day. I can't believe how many people do that. And they're into serious money, 150 bucks a month. I'm not like that. We're talking dollars, dollars. We're not talking hundred dollars, nothing like that at all. But I cover an awful lot of ground because when you look at it, there's a scroll bar at the bottom. And my average video is about 18 minutes long. On the weekend today, there were 25. 
And I cover everything in detail, the fundamentals, what's going on. And I take you on the weekend to the weekly charts, on the daily to the daily. We start off over 40 charts, all these different categories. I will look primarily at daily charts Monday through Friday. I will throw in a few weeklies. The weekend, which I've already recorded, in my, they're in my subscribers' hands before I've even done this tonight. Um, they're just the weeklies. I may throw in a daily here and there and that, but that's giving them the bigger picture as to what the longer term is looking like. You put it together, you got a full game plan. As I said, this is for the futures, but they go hand in hand because a lot of the times I'd rather trade in the ETFs. Sometimes it's less risk, same thing. I mean, come on, what do you think GLD is based on? The gold futures. In part, TLT, what's it based on? DIA, Dow, futures, SPY, ah, NASDAQ. You want me to go on and on? Because it goes on and on. So you put it together, you got two-handed fist, you're running with it, and you get a game plan. And that's the way you do it. I, as I said, I record about 5.30, the futures, and then I, I start recording. I really try at 9 o'clock, a half hour after the market opens in the uh, stock market. Why? Because in the stock ETF one, I want to get all the morning reports, data reports coming out. And they do come out often right up until nine o'clock. Now I have them, I put them in the report, I see the reaction, away we go. Plus at 8.30, the algorithm traders come into the market. You'll, that's why you jump around in those first 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you always see that action. Let them get the trades in, let the different indexes set themselves and we're ready to go. Pretty simple, it's not difficult. Go to my website under the word research. You can just follow my finger up here, come right over my head. There'll be an icon if you move it up there with your cursor, and away you go with it. You have a great weekend. Hit like if you like this, by the way, on my Rhapsody.